Hello everyone. Today we will cover a topic from shell scripting. So the topic is bash versus barn shell. So we'll see what is a barn shell and what are the differences between both these shells. And also why should we learn barn shell scripting first if you wanna uh, uh, learn shell scripting in properly and you wanna go into this field. Also we'll see the syntax, uh, the differences in syntax particularly for arrays in both these shells. So we'll learn how to code to use arrays in born shell scripting as well as in bash shell scripting. To study what is a shell in detail and the basics of shell scripting, I will do another tutorial. But for this tutorial, I assume that you are familiar with shell scripting and you know what is a shell and you have a little bit, at least a little bit knowledge of uh, programming. So let's start. Okay, so first of all, what is a shell? Shell is a command line interpreter for computer operating system. So shell is nothing else but a command execution program. That means we will write some command, the shell will read it, will process it and interpret it, and then it will uh, give us some output, uh, the output of that command. So born shell is actually the original unix shell and it was actually named after its developer uh, which was stephen born and it is also known as sh this sh okay the shebang line for born shell is forward slash bin forward slash sh and i hope you are familiar with the shebang line shebang line is actually okay i i'll go into it in in a while so um, the shell command language, which we also uh, call as shell scripting, shell scripting is a programming language described by the POSIX standard. So the shell scripting for born shell, since I've written SH here, that means I'm referring to this born shell. So the shell scripting for born shell is a programming language, which is described by the POSIX standards. Born shell, was actually the default shell for version 7 of Unix. Many Unix-like systems continue to have this, this uh, SH, uh, which will either be born shell or a symbolic link or a hard link to a compatible shell, even when other shells are used by most users. So what I mean by that is even if there are advanced shells which are used by other users in uh, any operating system, most um, Unix-like systems will always have this bin uh, sh, this, this sh, which will either be born shell or any other compatible shell. And by compatible shell, I mean that any shell in which born shell scripting is compatible. Right, uh, any shell which is um, compatible with the POSIX standards, which were uh, defined by POSIX. Right. So even if uh, other advanced shells are used by most users, even then born shell will continue to exist. That means if you write a script, if you code a script in born shell scripting, it will always be compatible. So you don't have to worry about the compatibility issues, whether that script will run, whether born shell will be present on that, on that operating system or on that device or whatever. It will always be there because it is a requirement of POSIX to have born shell. I have used some terminologies here, which you may not be familiar with, and one of them was symbolic link. So symbolic link means uh, a reference to any other file or a path to any other file. So by this line, we mean the path to any other compatible shell. So what we meant by this whole thing was SH will continue to exist in Unix-like systems in the form of either born shell or any other born compatible shell. That's what we meant by this. Okay, I have used two uh, more terminologies which are POSIX and shebang line. So let's see both these. First of all, let's see POSIX and what do we mean by POSIX. So what's the full form of POSIX? POSIX stands for Portable Operating System Interface and it is actually a set of standards defined by IEEE. So these standards are set to differentiate Unix and Unix-like systems with other operating systems. So they are used for maintaining software compatibility with 
uh, Unix variants, variants of Unix. Okay, if you want to study about POSIX in detail, you can go to this link here. This is actually the open group based specifications issue number seven and it was published in 2018. It's 2018 edition. So you can go there on this link. So what do we mean by all this? What's the summary? The summary is POSIX is just a set of standards which define how POSIX compliant systems should work. Now let's see the other terminology which was shebang line. So shebang line is actually the path to the interpreter and we write it on the first line of the shell script. So actually it is the path of the interpreter and it tells the uh, script that which interpreter we want to use to run that script, to interpret that script, right? Or which shell do we want to use for that shell script. So all scripts under uh, Linux execute using the interpreter which is specified on the first line of that script. And the example is this. You write hash, you write uh, exclamation mark, then this is the path that you have to write. So if we are if we are using born shell, we will write bin forward slash bin forward slash sh. If we are using any other shell, this line will be different. There is an interesting shebang line. If you write false in the shebang line like this, if you write false here instead of sh your script will not run. It will actually exit with uh, non-zero status. So uh, it, will, it will actually indicate failure and your script won't run. So if you want some script which you don't want to run or don't want anybody else to run, so you can write that here. Now let's see the differences between born shell and bash. The full form of bash is born again shell. And uh, born shell is also known as sh, which we just uh, looked at. And born again shell is also known as bash. Now, uh, born shell is the predecessor of bash. Predecessor means something which came first or before. So born again shell is actually the next version of born shell. And that makes born again shell the successor of sh. Successor means something that came afterwards. OK. Uh, the shebang line of born shell is this. You, you have seen this before. And the shebang line of born again shell is this. So you, we have just replaced this sh with the bash bash. OK. Born shell is POSIX compliant. That means it uh, complies all the, uh, the, the standards which are defined by POSIX. While born again shell is not a POSIX compliant shell. There are many features in bash which are not yet acceptable by POSIX. So it's, this is a big thing. And then uh, born shell has very minimalistic programming, very, very simple programming, while born shell provides more functionality. Bash shell is, uh, the, the features of bash shell are similar to modern programming languages like C++. Born shell does not support arrays. So we can use arrays here in some other format, but it doesn't support proper arrays. But born again shell supports arrays, the syntax of which is similar to C++. The next difference is there are many keywords in bash which are not supported in born shell, and these are local, source, function, etc. Also, born shell has a very simple loop, which is for, in, do, done, and it doesn't have this uh, increment assignment operator, while bash has uh, the three argument loop, which is the, the C style loop, this one, right, which you have used before in C or C++. It also has this increment assignment operator. And there are many other syntactic differences between both these shells. Okay. Um, born shell does not have this brace expansion. This is actually the range starting from zero to uh, less than 12, I think. So this, this range, bash has this, but born doesn't have this. Born shell does not have arithmetic. You need to use the bench calculator. While uh, bash born again shell has built in arithmetic using these operators, but there is no arithmetic for floating point here either. You have to use the bench calculator here. Okay, if you wanna go to the manual of born shell and see things in detail, this is the online manual of born shell and the online manual for born again shell bash is this 
so actually bash supports all the functionality which is in the born shell so this uh, this thing is very important bash born again shell supports all the functionality of born shell but this is not vice versa born shell does not support all the functionality of uh, born again shell so you can uh, think of it like this um, born is this uh, while bash is the superset of born so this is born shell and bash is the superset of uh, born uh, born shell right so all the fun functionality in born is supported by bash but the functionality there there are some functionality uh, some functionalities in bash which are not supported by born shell if you write a file in which you have used the shebang line for born shell but you have written the code or the syntax of bash born again shell then you will get error because that functionality may not be supported by born shell but if it's vice versa if you write the code for born shell and the shebang line you have used is for bash then that code will work why because born shell born again shell sorry born again shell bash is the superset of born shell i found an online site where you can check for your errors in your shell script online and uh, if you don't have uh, your Linux or your system where you can run your shell script and you want to find errors in your shell script, you can go to this link. This is the link. So, so let's see that. So this is this is the site, and let's say uh, let's like write some random example. So you can see it's saying no issues detected uh, while if I remove this line, right? If I copy this line and cut it. So when I've removed this line, let's see what it says. So it's saying that uh, add a shebang line or a shell directive, right? So it's it's found the, it has found the uh, error and it's telling you that do that, resolve it. So let's put that back. It will say that your script is fine, see? So you can use this site if you want to check errors in your shell script. Why should we learn born shell scripting first? So if you want to come into this field, if you want to learn shell scripting uh, properly through proper channel, if you want to do that uh, step by step, then uh, why should we learn born shell scripting first? Why not bash? Since bash is the next version of born and it provides you with more functionality, then why not? Uh, choose bash for for your beginning language in shell scripting so in my opinion there are some reasons for it and the first thing is it is standardized this language is standardized and second thing is it is, it is much simpler and easier to learn so uh, a while ago we discussed differences between born and bash and there you saw that bash has arrays bash has uh, some syntax similar to C++ and that is very attractive. So by looking at that, it looks like uh, it's very, very simple and easy, but uh, that's not just it. It has a lot more to it. So Bash has a lot more to it and it's mm, uh, it's uh, quite complicated compared to uh, born shell programming, right? So if you are a beginner, if you are a starter, so so at that level, learning Bash can be a bit overwhelming. And I think uh, since born is the basic uh, shell, born shell programming is the basics, and then you can move forward. So I think it's better to first learn born shell programming and then move towards the Bash shell programming or shell scripting. The third and the most important point is it is portable across all POSIX systems. So that means even if a system does not have a bash, even if that's the case, it will always have born shell, right? It will always have sh. Why? Because it, they are all POSIX systems are required to have born shell in them. That's a requirement. So all the Linux systems always have born shell or uh, any other compatible shell which has born shell scripting and uh, that this means if you write a script if you write code in born shell scripting it will always be compatible in all linux systems or unix like systems all the systems which are POSIX compliant right so you will never have compatibility issues with born shell scripting that is 
it means it is portable and it's a very important point. 